So in uh, June of 2006, I lived in Denver, and I decided I was, as a few mentioned, I was uh, working at a Fortune 25 company, but I, I was in the finance department at the time. And I decided, oh, I'm 43, why don't I go to law school? Because I'm bored with doing what I'm doing, and my son was in college, and I need something to do to, you know, expand my horizons. The problem with that was I didn't think about the fact that I'm 43 years old, I've never been married. Um, my son is biological, my nephew is better raised. And, um, hell, by the time I graduate from law school, I'm going to be 45 years old. And I don't want to start looking for a man when I'm 45 years old, so I've got to do it right now. But I'm 40, but I want to be full time and go to school full time, so I'm probably going to do that. So I decided to create this process for myself to do that in a very efficient manner, because I'm very efficient. And, um, but also with a lot of clarity and a lot of really clear mindset. And so I went online in June of 2006 with my community process and I created it myself. And very quickly, within a couple of weeks, I was talking to quite a few guys. I did not limit my geography because I thought, I don't know where this guy lives. And if he's willing to travel, then he's ever a great place, he should come here. So, um, I started talking to this guy that lived in Phoenix, England. And I had a handle, you know, in 2006, online dating was not something we talked about. But I said, how do you guys meet? He'd say, we didn't really ever talk about it. And um, so I but it also was kind of scary. I'm still kind of scary today, but um, so I had a handle on it. It was Gracie 12. And Gracie was my cat. So we had been talking for a while, we kept calling me Gracie, and I thought, okay, he's safe. I'll tell him my real name. So I said, you know, my real name's Linda, Gracie's my cat. And he said, well, I meant to talk to your cat. <laughs> So I continued to tell Grace all about me and the things that we had in common because she was a cat. And so I love taking naps, I love stretching my body, and I love and I her when she rubs my belly. So we had a lot in common. Then I started chatting. We were online frequently, and I was also still dating. So when I found after I would come home from the day is they wanted me to get back on the phone and talk to Lynn. And it was just, it, it became obvious later that, that this is a person that I really wanted to connect with on a bigger level. And so after several months of doing this, she finally said, look, I think you've taken this chat thing um, <laughs> to its, its last level here. So what's, what's the next step here? And I said, well, what do you do this weekend? I live in Phoenix, she was in Denver, and it was, like, it was a big pause, and she said, well, uh, I, I guess I'm open, and I said, all right, I'll book a flight in the hotel room, and I'll come to Denver. Big silence, and like, okay. And so, <laughs> so we, you know, we met at Denver Airport, and if you've ever done anything online dating, and, you know, people tend to not always put a picture on as that it looks like that, and it's when they're told, um, and I, so we had talked a lot on the phone, and I was really hoping I had already a lot of dates in town. I knew that it was a good chance that, and it's not that I needed him to look a certain way, I just wanted him to be truthful about it, right? Not hide who he was. And I was worried because now I'm committed to this whole weekend with this person. <laughs> and, and, um, and so when we met at the airport, and you, you, a 3D, uh, you know, a 2D picture, especially in those days, the quality is not so great on um, computer. Just didn't do him justice. He has these brilliant blue eyes and these a sparkling face and beautiful smile, and I was so so relieved, so relieved. <laughs> and what the real cool I was going to say impressed, but apparently. <laughs> His face just lit up and he was so excited. And I knew that if I had met his expectations or better, right? And so that just started, um, we had a great big memo, I'll tell you that. And um, we started dating and we both went online and, and took our profiles down. And we started dating, we, we went back and forth for two years. So I'm in law school and he has his own business in Phoenix. So for two years we went back and forth every other weekend or maybe we would meet somewhere. And then whoever's hosting the, the weekends, whoever was the person's city it was that the other was most to, 
it was their responsibility for creating uh, that weekend. And some kind of surprise, something we want to do. Because we had very limited time with each other because of our long distance relationship, that time became very precious to us. And we cleared the decks for each other. And I think that if we had been in the same town, we probably wouldn't have done that. So it was really important to our overall connection. We really, and we were still talking during the weeks that we were together, but that really just very present time became very important to the deepening of our connection. And so then at my last school graduation, um, in May 2008, it was part of 70 of my family and friends. Yeah, same here. And, <laughs> and he, now his memory is, a little bit of mine, his memory is that immediately, as soon as he got like, while he was still on, on his knees, everybody, all these women came directly up to the stage to, to, to look at my ring. <laughs> like, what's your ring? And, um, and then I know something that I didn't say yes. I never heard of it. 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 What did she say? <laughs> <laughs> so then um, I had to go take the walk with the young man's own because I don't have two walks in Zimbabwe. I have it. So if we're, uh, the other thing, we decided to move to Arizona because I didn't have to leave my job. I was getting a job as a lawyer at a company I was already at. And then he knew where I lived. And so that way he got to stay. He was in his block with his uh, architecture practice, and he you know, took a while to build that up, so we didn't have to start over. Um, the funny part story there is I used to tell people, because he was in my territory, that I would never move here <laughs> because it was too darn hot, and I don't like that kind of heat. But, you know, love will have you do lots of things you do. You do. <laughs> so, um, so I went to, within a week, we had it in Austin. We were off with a rain and it ate things. Rain and it ate, I moved. And um, we were married in March of 2009. And between us, we had three, uh, three adult sons. And at the time, I had three cats and two dogs. And one of the dogs was a 100 pound she dog. And Rick had an efficiency of her that was really close to his office. <laughs> and right, when he laid down, there was no room in the living room for anybody else to him. So we were quickly looking for an apartment for a house so that we could have some space together. And we could find our house. And then we had really a, an amazing next five years of our, our, our wedded bliss life. I mean, we argue, we have learned how to argue. So, uh, <laughs> 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 so I think it was win, and I could see on to that, and that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but then in, um, on the right for the anniversary, I had a pinched nerve in my eye, and I started to rub it, and I felt a lump. The lump was rather large and well defined, although you couldn't see it. So the natural thing that we all do now is we self-diagnose and we get on the internet, and uh, I see the first eight pages show up, and it says soft tissue sarcoma, and we don't amputate the limbs anymore. <laughs> so, I run into the office and Linda's in there and I said, I have cancer. <laughs> and I said, we don't diagnose ourselves on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a baby symptoms and I put them in myself and I said, there's a wide range of outcomes here and one of them is pinched nerve. So that's at least the things that could be. We're going to go with that until the doctor tells us otherwise. <laughs> so we went to the doctor and unfortunately, he didn't have cancer. So through a series of tests, I was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, and I believe it's because it, to this day, even though I survived it, I still can't say it. Um, Extraskeletal myoxoid chondrosarcoma, and it's so rare that it doesn't have a common name. So basically, it's a lump on one of your limbs, and uh, most of the time, it's discovered after someone dies. They go, oh, there it is. That's the reason. Um, it migrates, and so um, we were just fortunate. I was fortunate that. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that we caught her. So um, at that point, through several tests, 
Uh, we ended up doing the surgery. They removed a, a tumor that was about six inches long, about four inches wide, about two inches thick, and it had wrapped around my thigh bone. Uh, the doctor had told me that uh, we're going to have to remove that on the margin, so that's going to be muscle uh, that surrounded this thing. And so uh, uh, we're going to take about four percent of your thigh muscle, and it's going to be a long recovery. Now, um, I had, I used to play, or I still play a lot of basketball, and at the time that was kind of a concern. And he said, well, it's going to be a long recovery, and um, that leg will always be jeopardized, so you're going to have to you know, let go of the expectations. Uh, you won't be able to probably push off that leg to go to your right side, and you probably won't be able to jump. It's not bad, because it really wasn't all that quick, and I really still can't jump. So. <laughs> During this time, now, lots of people know about this, and so Linda created a Facebook page, which was vital uh, to all of our friends, uh, my clients, uh, my relatives, uh, all of this. And so it really was uh, a great benefit to everyone. Uh, this tribe of people who could follow what was going on in my life. There were lots of pieces and components, but uh, she would update and then she wouldn't have to say it 30, 40 times a day. So it was really a blessing, and everybody got the same details. So everybody understood it. And it was wonderful. Um, what it did do was as people started to respond back, I get to see all this. You know, I love sleeping so this. I had no idea. I mean, I had friends, but I had no idea how deep those connections were. I had people that cared about me that I didn't know was, you know, it was that close. Um, and so what it did was it woke me up. And it, it allowed me to understand that, that I have a lot of people that care about me, that love, about, that love me, and are concerned, and wish me well wishes, and their jokes were uplifting, and it became a community, it became a tribe of people that she referred to. I am now more present about my life, I have more balance with my business, it's not the most important thing in my life, and my friends and my family are. You call it your best connection. Yeah. So, <laughs> people have asked me before, if you had to do all the work and what would you do differently so that you would not cancel? I said, I wouldn't do anything differently <clears throat> because I think it was one of the best lessons. <laughs> so, after a long PT uh, thing that my doctor had wanted me to take a year, I had to four months. And it was excruciating. And, and I was just now determined to get back out of the court and reconnect with all my friends that I played ball with. And here, short shirts, actually, here. Just <laughs> 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 So, for So, I came out on the floor and I'm dribbling around and warming up, and everybody said, Wow, we can't tell. They need to have anything done since they made surgery. I mean, I have scarred my thigh that's 22 inches long. And my thighs are 21. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend said, you know, you're you're moving around, it looks it looks like you're you don't have any limitations and you know you're you couldn't jump before, you can't jump now. <laughs> so we, we, we don't know any difference at this point. So um Rick is now five years out and um, he has the same chance of of getting that cancer again as anyone in the population, which is lucky for all of us, is very, very good. There's only 50 cases a year at most. So, well, that means that it's very unlikely to be in this room or in the city of Phoenix, potentially. So, um, so, we're very blessed about that. Then uh, we went on and we started, we were traveling, we were having, you know, we, we grouped into our new, more balanced life. And about two and a half years ago, I had um, an injury to my knee that I had gotten when I was traveling. I traveled quite a bit. And I wasn't recovering from it. And so Rick was bugging me and said, You need to go in to the doctor. You always bug me, you need to go. So I went and he said, Well, you do a bruise there, but the reason that you're feeling pain is in the bruise. You have stage four arthritis. And not only that, you have stage, you have stage four arthritis in your Right, when you have stage four arthritis in your left knee, I had no pain in my left knee. 
He said, I can't believe that you've gone from zero to stage four with no pain in either knee. It just doesn't make any sense. And I said, well, I don't. <laughs> and of course, I thought the way our psychology works, two weeks later, my left knee starts to be like <laughs> So, um, that, this is another area where I think that as annoyed as I was with my diagnosis, um, where it became a blessing. Because what happened was that I evaluated why did I not feel that pain? I realized that I was living my life at my job, completely disconnected my head from my body. I was completely living up in my, in my head. 18 hours a day, and with my butt in chair. And my 50th birthday was coming up. Actually, I just realized today is the anniversary, one two year anniversary, February 7th, that I love my partner job. <laughs> Today, I love my perfect job because my dad and I, when he was 55, he turned um, 55 actually February 4th, he would, um, was his birthday. And I turned 57 or 55 on February 12th, I was going to turn 55, and I just thought, I'm going to die in this chair. I thought, I'm going to get out of here. And it wasn't that I hated my job, I loved what I did, but it wasn't getting, it wasn't servicing me. And I was just a corporate clock. Like, as soon as I left, it would fill the space. And at the time, I, I worked in that company for 21 years. I had the very time that that was all going on. I was in a very toxic environment. Our culture and our environment was very toxic. I knew enough that it would change over time. I could always judge it and wait it out. And I just thought, I don't know what about this thing. So I went to my husband, went to Rick, and I said, I need to tell you something. I had not really told him this was. Um, and how much pain I was in every day now that my head is big. And he said, Good tomorrow. Don't even think about it. Now, I'm hurting a significant pain pump, and he didn't do any of that to figure this out. Just good tomorrow, and we'll figure it out. And I can be mad at my head. <laughs> I don't know if you can be mad at But um, anyway, so I think I should be so honest, but I was not. In that chair when I turned into And then I decompressed for two months and I went to a seminar with uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, who I deeply love and work with that was one of the very first life coaches out there. And when I left that seminar three days later, I was a dating coach and I had two clients. And those two clients have on them. And uh, what I did was brush off my process that I had used with, to find Rick, that all my friends had always said, you need to share with people that I was busy to be And now I get to get back, and I get to talk about love all day. <laughs> and it's so much more fun. And in the part, and I think we're clear enough time, but I do want to talk about our blessing journey so that you can talk to him. <laughs> this was her blessing because she did get to realize that she needed to get out of her job and, and find real joy. And, and so even though, again, this whole thing is about love and wellness and the, the, the jeopardized situation we were both in really came to life as a blessing for both of us because we made changes. Yeah. And then another unintended not planned blessing was that I had to start swimming because I didn't do knees. So I had to I had to lose 120 pounds in order to be um get my knees. So I lost 60 so far. And the way I did that was it was through swimming. Well, I'm not eating as much, but but also but also swimming. So I swam two to three times a week. Um, usually it's three fourths of miles per mile. And that's like four for runners, that's four miles. They put like one mile to me, it's four miles. Um, anyway. So, the interesting thing that came up with this is that um, in order for her to start swimming, she should have some support with this. I was a competitive swimmer in high school, and I really learned to hate it. 
and it's just it's boring, and the coach is screaming at you. Yeah, I, there's swimmers in the crowd, I see you guys smirking. And, and you just know what that is. It's like the coach is screaming at you, you can't hear anything because you're testing out of the water. And you just grind it away for an hour and a half, and then you get out of the water, and you dry off, and you go back to what you're doing. And so it's just a very lonely sport. And but that was every moment that I'm in the pool, I'm focusing on my stroke, my technique, my, my intentions to get another tenth of a second off my time. So now it's time for Linda to start swimming. So I help her with her stroke, I help her with her pace, and all of a sudden I realize the thing I liked about swimming was teaching and coaching. I had done that all my younger life and then got away from it. So now here I am doing that one piece that I love, and I found swimming again. <laughs> so now we're sitting together about two times a week, part of our date night experience. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we're continuing to play basketball. I still can't jump. <laughs> and if there's one thing that we can leave you with in whatever challenges you are facing in life, love for 